Hey everyone, I would like to show you our reptile room number one. We have a total of three display rooms for our reptiles and today we are going to go over room number one. Um, this room has a total of 12 enclosures. Um, this is also where we keep our insectivores. Um, and we have a few amphibians in this room. Um, so I'll just give you a little pan display. Uh, there's our carpet python. In the back there is our green tree monitor. Uh, this is our 150 gallon dart frog enclosure. Um, below the dart frog in the small tank on the bottom, there is an axolotl. It is a square tank. It's kind of like made for amphibians. Um, and then this rack over here is where we keep all of our arachnids and our leopard gecko. And we do have some roaches on the bottom of the rack. We have the giant Madagascar hissing cockroaches and the dubia roaches. Um, <clears throat> so we will start over here with our... Nigerian Euromastis. Um, he is a handsome little fellow. So, uh, this guy was a rescue, like most of our animals. Um, I find a lot of them on Craigslist and different Facebook groups and whatnot, but. I picked this guy up. I was at a show in um, Washington, D.C. and found him out there. Um, this guy here has a kind of an interesting story. Uh, my wife and I, we were at the Wilmington Serpentarium. I do apologize. I need to clean the glass. We're at the Wilmington Serpentarium uh, looking at Dean Ripa's display and uh, right before it closed. And while we were out there, we found this beautiful carpet python. Um, I built a really unique custom enclosure for him. It is like really tall, triangular. Uh, it's like three and a half feet uh, pentagonal, I'm sorry, um, triangular prism. So that is what he lives in. He spends most of his time on the top, but when it gets too warm, he will come down to the bottom. I'm just gonna open it up here and kind of show you how it works. So the whole, the whole front just opens up. And here we have Diesel, our carpet python. I wish he would kind of peek around and show himself. Oh, not today. So, yeah, that's Diesel's house. Um, this is our beautiful peach throat monitor, Princess Peach. She is so full of energy. She's actually giving me the signal that she would really love to come down. Just take a little drink. She is definitely one of my favorites. She's just extremely colorful and very inquisitive, like very active. She utilizes her whole enclosure. I mean, it, it is an eight foot wide enclosure. So she 
needs it. She needs every bit of that space, if not more. So I try to tried to make it so she could use all the walls. All the walls are cork bark. Um, she has this cool little area where she got her double her double basking area. She one of the basking um, features is a ceramic heat emitter and then the other one is just her typical par 38 like floodlight so between the two it keeps that whole nook up there nice and toasty and um, in the hottest areas it gets about 135 or 140 depending on um, the ambient temperature which being that this enclosure does go up to the ceiling the ambient temperature does get pretty hot um, especially in the summertime, I mean, it'll be definitely like upwards of 90 degrees up there. And then here on the floor, it'll be like around 80. So even in the wintertime when I've got the stove cranking, it'll be 90 up there. Um, so that is her light box. That's what I use for pretty much all the monitors. It's just like a, a box that has a little door. I open up the door and that's where I put my light fixtures. So that way they can't actually jump on the lights or climb on the lights and potentially burn themselves. I have had it happen once or twice, so that's the method that I use to counteract that problem. So that's the peach throat in her enclosure. Um, down here we have the boys. We have our two Argentine tegus. They are really really sweet uh, Wally was a rescue we've had him for about two years now and then Steven we grew this red one here we grew him from a baby he was just a little hatchling when we got him and he is a year and six months old so Wally is stunted because um, Steven is actually longer than Wally at the moment but they are both um, growing very very quickly or steven's growing very quickly while he's done growing he's five years old so steven will definitely be much larger than wally by the time he's done growing we give him everything he needs so their cage is similar to the peach sir i mean it obviously doesn't have the arboreal climbing features because they just don't need it um, they're so clumsy and they like they're more of the terrestrial ground dwellers, so it's pointless to give them all those arboreal features, but they do have a nice little like rock background and a little wood feature that they do climb on occasionally, but it's low to the ground, so I don't have to worry about them hurting themselves because they're so clumsy. Um, but yeah, that enclosure like hinges up. Um, Let's see here, let me get in, in there and show you how it works. This whole thing here just swings up. And now we can say hello to the boys. What's up, boys? Steven's still a little, little jumpy, but he's getting better as he gets older. And Wally, he's my little superstar here. He's, I love this guy. Super friendly. My buddy. Why my buddy? He's such a good lizard. So and he just pancaked out. He's like, okay. Yeah, these are like, you know, when people ask me like if lizards have feelings and you know if they can like kind of form a bond or whatever. Um, you know, generally I I would say no, you know, most lizards don't really have the emotional capabilities to like feel affection or 
something like that. But I do think these tegus are a little different. They're um, they are very unique animals. Um, this is a burn from his previous from his previous ownership, and it's something that yeah he'll he'll be living with that color deformation due to the burn from the scar. Um, but he is a very sweet lizard. He's just he goes to educational presentations and he goes to schools and birthday parties. He's he's definitely like one of my one of my superstar lizards. So I love him. He's such a good boy. He's got some big old cheeks. Mm -mm -mm. He's a good boy. So. So we'll leave them be now. We'll move on to the next, the next group of animals. Um, and just for reference, um, th this is an eight-foot cage as well, but they are going to be going into a ten-foot cage. Um, it'll be ten foot deep and five feet wide, um, which will be their forever cage. But this is a good temporary for them. It has everything they need. It's you know it controls the humidity well. I can keep the humidity about sixty to eighty percent humidity, depending on how dry the ambient humidity is. So Ooh, we got a yawn. Awesome. This peach peach. He came to say hello again. She really wants to come out. So a lot of the monitors, like and the tegus, like they're they're very intelligent and they they signal to me when they want out. Um, at first, like I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's just a coincidence. But through repetition of just basically, they come to the glass and. They start pawing at it. They, they let me know like, hey, I'd, I'd like to come out of here. And then I open the door for them. Sometimes they run away, but the ones that you do it to repeatedly over and over again, they eventually will crawl right out onto you and they will be um, just friendly, inquisitive, you know, just kind of exploring around. So it does take some time, but that is like my um, slow, and gentle approach to taming my lizards. Um, so I just simply wait for them to want to come out. Um, some of them really, you know, they figure it out and then they start to abuse the situation. So the one that has really abused the situation is the green tree monitor. This is her, it's like a floor to ceiling. It's five feet wide on the inside and it is seven, like seven and a half feet tall or even, almost eight feet tall cage. Um, so it does have quite a few like branches for her to climb in and um, like she can climb on the background she's got a cool little log house in there um, and there she is just hanging out that's my prana um, so this this whole unit just opens up just like my other ones so I can just open this entire door. Um, this has a light box as well because she loves to climb and she would definitely climb all over the light if I, if I didn't have that box. So that thing has definitely saved me and her from vet visits and treatments and all kinds of lovely stuff. So there she is in shed. So pretty. What are you doing? Huh? You want to come out? She loves to come out. So this is like one of the ones that I was saying. Um, she basically has, has taught me what she wants. And she gets very persistent about it. 
and she's extremely friendly like she'll climb right out onto me and hang out with me um, like all my tropical tanks or enclosures have like misting systems that go off 12 times a day and so she's one of the ones that obviously is super tropical so had to make sure she had everything she needed hey baby love this lizard she's like one of the reasons why I fell in love with monitors she's so sweet <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so I just wanted to give you guys a little little sh viewing of her and how sweet she is in her cage and everything and she's just she's a doll so but yeah that's that's her enclosure real tall wide not very deep but Plenty tall and plenty wide. Okay, so that's that's Miss Pran of the Green Tree Monitor, Brainus Persinus. Um, next here we have the amazing dart frog enclosure, which this thing's been alive for at least two years. Like when I started this whole project at Lizardland, I really wanted to. Um, give me one second. So when I started this whole project, I really wanted to have like a really cool amphibious enclosure with dart frogs. Um, so I, I've had these guys for quite a while, for well not a super long time, but I've had them for two years and they do really well in here. Like they have this, this filtrate, filtrated um, water section, uh, which they love. They got some like all natural um, moss growing and it's really cool this stuff just popped up out of nowhere one day the um i'm sorry i'm having a loss for words here the um four leaf clover uh which is some really cool stuff and they just love this this little aquatic side um where they need to hydrate and you know cool down and this side is has some air plants. We've got a really cool air plant there. Um, we have all the bromeliads, which are just amazing plants. It's probably like some of my favorite plants on the planet is bromeliads. Like they are just really, really cool. How they cling on to trees and grow all over the branches and stuff in tropical environments. Um, so these do really well in here. I mean, I don't have much ventilation in this enclosure. The whole enclosure stays at like, like 80, 90, 95% humidity. I mean, it's really, really humid in there, which is good for the plants and the frogs because the frogs are just so fragile. Um, but yeah, that's my dart frog enclosure. Um, and there's an orchid in there too, which has been alive for two years, but it just doesn't bloom. I'm still working on that. So... And once again, that's a 150 gallon size tank, so it's like really big for them. But in the future, I'll have more than two. Um, I hope to have maybe like six in there, maybe maybe more. I'll kind of just have to play it as it goes. Um, I wish I could find the other. Just pick them out easily. Right now, there's only one that's really visible. So down here, we have you know something that a lot of people really love. Um, we have an axolotl in here, which I'm only getting the tail right now. Well, let me see here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so he's doing like what axolotls do. There we go. There's a better shot. Chilling. Um, here we have our arachnids, we have our classic rose hair, sorry about the dirty glass, gotta clean this one, uh, it's our rose hair, Rosie, 
and hey Rosie Rosie to Rose hair uh, this we have a a pink toe which are super fast arboreal just crazy things and here we have our Brazilian white knee I am gonna jazz these three bugariums up a little bit like I'm not super thrilled they're just very basic so they're gonna get some upgrades in the near future um, Here's our giant Madagascar hissing cockroaches, which are pretty cool. And a dubia roach colony that we use for feeders. The animals love them. Okay, so there. Oh, 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 I can't forget. And our awesome little leopard gecko. Such a good boy. So, here we have our room number one out of three. We're gonna do a series of videos. The next video will be on room number two, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of bioactive setups in there. Um, there's quite a few quite a few displays to see. Not quite as big, the, the displays aren't as big as uh, the ones in room number one, but we definitely have a cool variety of animals in there. Um, and just really, really awesome bioactives down there at the end. So. So that's just a sneak peek of the next video. Um, hope everyone enjoyed this one of room number one. Lots of cool stuff to see in this one. So, like and subscribe. Stay tuned for our next video.